welcome back. This is Hank and he is a sulcata tortoise. Today we're going to be talking about how to care for your tortoises during winter. I just started preparing Hank's indoor winter home and I'm not exactly finished yet but I thought it would be great to share it with you guys. So I'm going to set Hank here and see if he ever decides to come out and join us. Now he isn't in danger of falling off the table because he probably isn't going to be too active right now and if he does come out and starts walking around I'll be able to see him and move him. Not all tortoises hibernate during winter so let's talk about how to care for tortoises that do not hibernate during the winter months. In some places tortoises, even the ones that do not hibernate, can stay out all year long and this is great. Those people who are able to do that with their tortoises are very lucky because outside is the best place for tortoises. But usually during the winter months a tortoise will have to be brought into the house unless of course they are the type of tortoises that can hibernate. However, sulcatas, leopards, and Indian star tortoises cannot hibernate. So you will need to do some research to find out if your tortoise can hibernate or not. Those are only three examples. And if your winters get lower than 70 degrees, you will need to bring your tortoise inside during the winter months. It is also not recommended to have young tortoises hibernate. So if you have a box turtle or something like that that is under the age of three years, you will probably want to bring them inside during the winter months. You'll also need to think about predators and soil conditions. If your tortoises are in danger, are being dug up they will have to be brought in during the winter. If the tortoise is dug up during very cold temperatures they can die and they also need to have the right soil conditions in order to be able to hibernate. So clay, concrete, rocks, things like that all makes it very hard for them to be able to hibernate. And only healthy tortoises that have been eating all summer should be allowed to hibernate. So if for any reason your tortoise cannot hibernate it's important to build them the right habitat during the winter. If your tortoise is under six inches, usually a turtle box, a 40 gallon breeder tank, or even a storage tub will work great for them. But if your tortoise is bigger than that, you will want to have a custom built turtle box made for them. You want it to be large enough so that they can walk around and dig. They're gonna be spending a lot of time in this habitat during winter. So if it's too small, not only will it lack in mental stimulation, but it can also cause health problems such as pyramiding. This is an example of pyramiding and it is associated with metabolic bone disease. It is a serious issue that is only experienced with captive tortoises. Sulcatas are the most difficult to house because of their large size. I'm actually working on his habitat right now. I haven't finished it yet because we've actually been experiencing very warm weather here. I filled the bottom of this habitat with soil and there's also some lights installed overhead. Make sure you fill up your habitat with safe soil and organic garden soil or topsoil is going to be the best option. You don't want the soil to have been treated with anything or to have fertilizers in it. And you also don't want to use sand. Heating and lighting are extremely important for them. Tortoises need a UVV lamp. In the wild, tortoises and turtles are exposed to sunlight, which helps them process calcium and vitamin D. Tortoises in captivity that are not exposed to a UVV light will develop metabolic bone disease. When caring for tortoises, lighting is extremely important. It is as essential as food and water for them. It is not something that they can do without. Besides a UVV lamp, they also need to have heat. So the heat should be about 75 degrees on the cool end and the basking temperature depends on the species of turtle that you're caring for. Sulcata tortoises have a basking temperature of about 100 degrees, whereas leopard tortoises want it to be about 95 degrees. And 85 degrees is an appropriate basking temperature for box turtles. So it does vary between species and you will need to do some research to see what the best temperature is for yours. Depending on the age of your tortoise, you may need to keep your habitat with high heat humidity. Research has shown that there is less of a chance of tortoises developing pyramiding when they are exposed to high humidity during the first two years of their life. It's also good to provide your tortoise with a water dish that they can get in and out of. However, this does need to be changed daily because they can make quite a mess. And your tortoise will also appreciate a hide. It's important to remember to not overfeed your tortoise. Remember they're not going to be as active during the winter months and another cause for pyramiding is overfeeding. Sulcata tortoises should be 
provided with grasses and not just wet greens. If your habitat is in a garage or a shed that is not connected to the house, be sure to check on them at least twice a day. If their heat bulbs give out, they can die if exposed to temperatures below 65 degrees. I hope you enjoyed today's video about winter care for tortoises, but this doesn't cover everything. So if you want to learn more about vermation and hibernation, be sure to go over to Leopard Gecko Talk and watch Rebecca's video. She has an awesome channel about animals, so be sure to check her out and watch her video about vermation. You can find the link in the description or just click on the screen. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more animal videos. And you can also find me and Hank on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.